a country that used to be so rich that it founded its own airlines. At the same time, a country that is so small that it has no capital or army. With its area of only 21 square kilometers, this country is situated in the Pacific Ocean, near Micronesia. Its name is Nauru, and its history is one of the most interesting in the world. The name Nauru originates from the local language and means I go to the beach. And really, it is possible to reach the beach in no time, since one can walk the whole country within just a few hours. On this map, you can see the administrative division of Nauru. The country has 14 districts. In total, there are less than 11,000 inhabitants on the island. Besides Noruans, there are immigrants from China, Kiribati, and the Philippines. Before we focus on Nauru's history, take a look at the country's coat of arms. The alchemical symbol for phosphorus refers to Nauru's natural resources and is connected to the history of the island. As of the flag of Nauru, it reflects the geographical location of Nauru, in the ocean, south of the equator. The 12-point star represents Nauru's 12 original tribes. And now comes the history of Nauru. It is known that for around 3,000 years the 12 original tribes have been living peacefully and happily on Nauru. The island was abundant in plants, tropical fruits and clean water and the first European who visited it, called it the Pleasant Island. However, in the beginning of the 20th century, scientists discovered large quantities of phosphates under Nauru's soil. Phosphates are important for military industry and agriculture and therefore cost a lot. Nauru used this fact. After becoming a sovereign state in 1968, the country started gathering and exporting these resources. Within a few years, the island became the richest country on the earth. People got so rich that they did not need to work anymore. So they focused on consuming instead. They built hotels and canceled taxes. School, healthcare and public services got free. Every inhabitant bought a car, even if the island was so small. Then, phosphates came to an end. And so did the easy living. As all resources were exploited, 80% of Nauru were destroyed. The flora did not exist anymore. People were not capable to make a living in the traditional way by fishing or growing plants. Nauru became the poorest country in the world. So the government found new ways how to earn money. These ways were either illegal or immoral, such as money laundering, selling of Noruan passports to criminals and even selling the country's vote regarding important international questions. The country even requested money from Australia for accepting asylum seekers although it provided highly inappropriate environment for them. Nowadays, Nauru faces serious issues. Unhealthy lifestyle is one of them. Noruans can't produce food and order it from Australia. As most of that food is processed, it has an impact on people's weight and health. 94% of Noruans are obese. Another issue Nauru faces is the unemployment. 90% of Nauru's inhabitants have no job. Most of the rest work in the government structures. Global warming is also a potential danger for the island. Within a few years, Nauru would be under the water, since its highest point is just 65 meters. Despite the unpleasant past and current situation of the island, there are many good things we can say about Nauru and Noruans. Overall, Nauru is a safe place to be at. The tropical climate and the sun there are beneficial for health. Noruans are friendly and polite and respect each other. They value education and their families. Some of Nauru's inhabitants return to traditional ways of making a living, such as fishing or growing vegetables. All the positive changes and lessons learned will impact Noruans in a good way. Thank you for watching. 
If this video was interesting for you, please watch also next one in which I will introduce to you the Noruan music and cuisine. There will be also a special video devoted to Noruans. Thanks again and have a nice day.